the fine tuning of the universe is very interesting. Um, it has been suggested by various physicists that the fundamental constants of physics, of which there are half a dozen or so, these are numbers which physicists can measure, but they have no explanation for, rationale for. That if any of these numbers was ever so slightly different, then the universe as we know it wouldn't be here and we wouldn't be here. Um, if you think of these as half a dozen knobs, like rheostats that you could twiddle, different, different t tunings, then the suggestion is that if any of these half dozen or so knobs was tuned ever so slightly different, the things like the gravitational constant, things like that, then we wouldn't have galaxies, we wouldn't have stars, we wouldn't have chemistry, we wouldn't have life, we wouldn't have us. In a multiverse, the explanation is that of all possible universes, we are in one of the tiny minority that is capable of giving rise to, to us. Here the idea is that there's a, a, a multiverse of universes. There are millions of universes which all have different tunings of these knobs, the different values of the fundamental constants. And we have to be in one of that minority of universes in which the knobs are fine-tuned, happen to be fine-tuned to exactly the right values to bring us into existence. That's the anthropic principle coming in there. The anthropic principle, we are here, we could only be in the kind of universe which could give rise to us. That I think is favored by possibly the majority of physicists. My instinctive reaction is it is the biggest violation of the principle of Occam's razor we've ever seen. <laughs> in other words, that principle that we normally use in science and in our investigation that we keep the number of hypotheses as small as possible. And I was taught quantum physics at Cambridge by John Polkinghorne, who's been all his life an extreme skeptic of this kind of thing. And I'm interested that even Sir Martin Rees, our astronomer royal, who's written a book about this, and he talks about some people like Polkinghorne believe in a creator. And then he says, I prefer to believe in a multiverse. Now that's not a scientific statement. The other thing is we need to be careful of a false alternative. Because Max Tegmark, who was one of the early proposers at Princeton of the multiverse theory, said there's either a God or a multiverse. But logically, that's false, of course. God can create as many universes as he likes. I should also say that one of Stephen Hawking's co-workers is a Canadian Christian, a distinguished professor of physics called Don Page. And when I was writing my little book about Stephen Hawking, in which I talk a little bit about the multiverse, I, I wrote to him. And it was very interesting what he said. He gave me permission to reproduce it. But he's a believer, a Christian, and he believes in the multiverse theory. So it's not an alternative God or the multiverse. So no matter what you believe about it, you can't deduce the non-existence of God from it.